everyone, welcome to the pursuit of health, wealth and happiness. My name is Nay if you're new. Today is just such a miserable, dark, gloomy and rainy day outside. So what I've actually done is I have completely shut all the blinds in the living room. I've put on a cozy fireplace on YouTube. I've lit my candles and I've put on a cozy jumper. Today I'm gonna film a cozy living room tour for you guys. I actually realized that I haven't properly shown you our living room for maybe a year and next week we are actually planning on getting our Christmas tree and we're also going to decorate the house which means that we'll be rejigging this living room so I wanted to show you guys as it is day to day before we start the Christmas madness. So before I get into the video if you're new my name is Nay and I talk about all things health, wealth and happiness on this channel as well as of course documenting this renovation journey of our 123 year old Victorian terrace here in Bristol. So if that's the kind of content you enjoy watching and you're not subscribed please subscribe down below so you never miss another video. As you can see in the empty house tour video, this living room was dull, bland and lifeless. It felt quite cold and it was very plain. If you haven't seen my renovation mistakes video, in that video I share with you that one mistake that people make is not highlighting unique features of a home and that's what we wanted to do. The walls were white and bare so we painted this room faro and ball French grey and we absolutely love this colour. Sometimes it looks more green and sometimes it looks more grey. We added panelling to the wall to give it some feature and texture. Adding this panelling also broke up the blocky paint. So we added panelling all around the room and made it in line with the top of the window frame. And this actually mirrors very nicely with the chunky skirting we have at the bottom of the wall. And if you want to see this in more detail, check out our renovation playlist where you can watch us paint this room. The floor was a boring, beige, dirty carpet and we were really hopeful that underneath the carpet there would be the original wood floor. So when we got the keys we checked and we were so happy to see the wood floor underneath. We were very lucky that the wood was in good condition. No boards were broken so all we needed to do was sand and sand the years of dust and dirt away. Cody spent a couple of days sanding and painting and he's done a great job bringing this floor back to life. And if you want to see this in more detail check out our renovation video where we break down step by step how to restore original wood floors. I absolutely love the colour contrast against our rug and this colour helps to give this room some warmth and make it feel warm and cozy and again this is a unique feature of a period property that we look forward to showcasing when we eventually come to sell. So apart from painting and panelling and restoring the original wood floor that's all we did renovation wise to this room and then ever since then we've just been slowly furnishing and decorating and this weekend we are actually going to restore this coffee table and bring it back to life and help it look brand new again. You can actually see where I've made a start trying to sand the legs and the tabletop but if you want to see that video make sure you're subscribed. So now let's actually do a walkthrough and I'll show you our furniture pieces and our decor pieces. Well excellent timing because the rain has stopped and the sun has made an appearance so it's making this room look a little bit more brighter and comment down below if you think the French grey colour looks a bit more green or a bit more grey in this light. So I'm just going to start literally in the doorway and I'm just going to make my way through around the room. So I've obviously already explained the floor but here's just the floors in another angle and again when I said earlier the contrast against the rug and also the white of the skirting and then against the, the French grey looks so good. The door that we have here already is the door that was already here. If I was staying here long term I would really like to completely sand this door take away the 50 layers of white paint and have a woody oaky door. These doors are such high quality, they're very thick solid wood doors and I just think it's such a shame to have it covered in layers and layers of paint. But this isn't a long term house, I think we might move next year so I just think it would be a lot of time and energy that won't actually add value to the house, it's just our personal preference so we're actually just leaving it. Behind the door I bought this gold and black doorstop from Amazon and that's because we actually didn't have a doorstop at all so I don't know if you can see here there's a very faint mark where the door handle was banging into the wall, so annoying but for the most part 
we always keep this door open so you can't see it but now it just gives it that bit of protection and then of course as you come into the living room the first thing that I am particularly drawn to is the shelving we were very lucky that the previous owners actually left these shelves for us here but again similarly to the doors they were covered in layers and layers of white paint. Cody took them off, sanded them, and then stained them the same color as our floor. And we just got a stain from B&Q, but you can also get it on Amazon too. I can link it down below for you. When it comes to alcoves, I really like when people do built-ins and they also have like a built-in cupboard at the bottom and then shelving on top and it just looks very seamless. But this is actually very expensive. Of course, you can try and do it yourself, but again, it's very timely and to be honest I just really like how this looks it ties in nicely and it just means we've been spending our time and money and energy elsewhere in the home which if you've been following our renovation journey you know that we can't afford to waste any time or money on little things like this now as I said earlier when we moved in we had very little furniture and very little personal belongings and home little decor pieces so this looked really bare and this is normally the seasonal occasional shelf so when it's Christmas I pop up some Christmas pieces and also um, cards when it's birthdays this is where birthday cards go I had a couple of pieces on there but as the year or so since you last saw the living room as the year has gone on I've slowly collected little bits and bobs to start styling and decorating shelves and this is how it looks like at the moment so I'm gonna get a chair and then I'm gonna stand on the chair and then I'll talk you through what's on the shelves I always think that when it comes to ornaments and collecting nice pieces it's actually those things that we collect over long term, over you know a number of months or a number of years that are actually more meaningful. I really hate the thought of you know going on Amazon or going to a bunch of charity shops and just grabbing random bits just to you know put it on the shelf. So the things that I have are things that I've collected over a long period of time and that I really like or have been gifts from various Christmas and birthdays. So the very top shelf, so I'm just gonna go left to right. So the first thing on the top shelf is a nice handmade gift that my mum bought us for when we moved in. So it's just some sticks and rocks that say Naomi and Cody first home and the date that we got the keys, which was July 2022. And then next to it, I have a spider plant. This was actually an offcut from my nan's massive spider plant in her conservatory. So it's really nice that I have one of the babies and then I can think of my nan when I look at this plant. You'll also notice that they're both gray and that ties in so nicely with our sofas, which was not planned, but I'm not really a gray neutral person, but I understand why, because it just goes with every color, especially green. And then the last thing on the shelf is I bought this really lovely print from a Bristol illustrator. I will leave her website down below. She does a number of illustrations of Bath and Bristol and also some other places abroad but I particularly like this image because it really captures Bristol. If you're unfamiliar with Bristol, once a year Bristol have an annual um, hot air balloon festival where for three mornings and for three evenings there's a mass balloon ascent and the area where this is shot is called Clifton and the bridge is called Clifton Suspension Bridge but you can actually go to this Clifton Observatory and you will see this view which is what we actually did at six o'clock in the morning in August and um, the balloons didn't go unfortunately as high as this but we were still able to capture this ascent and it just really it just really captures Bristol and I think you know if we were ever to leave Bristol I would still like to keep this photo and just have that memory of my time living here and lastly I've just lit in the little tea light but this is a little tea light holder this was a gift from my mum I think in 2019 for Christmas going again from left to right so on the left hand side I've just stored some of my books now I don't keep books if I do keep books it's for very good reason and that would be if it's the best book I've ever read if it's perhaps a gift from someone else or perhaps even if I've gifted a book to someone else and they've returned it I never actually reread books twice so once I read a book if I don't really you know love it I will gift it to someone else or if no one wants it I'll donate it to a charity shop so I have a very small book collection here so left to right I have the Tales for Twilight book this is a hardback book and it's 200 years of ghost stories I love this book and I also love the cover and that it's hardback Next we have The Haunted Season. Now both of these books were actually a gift to my mum earlier in this year and 
she didn't like them so she gave them back to me so I've enjoyed reading particularly this one I didn't like this one so much but it's definitely got me into ghost stories especially this time of year so I think I'll start um, exploring some more ghost stories and short stories the next book is um, The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre I actually bought this book for my granddad earlier this year and he liked it and also gave it back to me I'm now a massive fan of Ben McIntyre and his work he actually writes about spies and espionage particularly people who've had very significant careers and this particular book was about a um, Soviet KGB officer who ended up spying for us in Britain um, and I'm slowly making my way through the Ben McIntyre books I normally now get the books from the library this next book is by Tim Burton this was signed and I had a little note in from my uncle from about maybe 12 years ago so I've never um, got rid of it and then next we have a Jacqueline Wilson book. She writes children's books and one day she was at a signing event um, years and years ago, maybe 20 years ago, and she actually signed this. So again, I've never got rid of it. And then next we have Ikigai. This is such a cool book. It's a beautiful cover and again, a beautiful hardback that my friend gifted me for my most recent birthday. But I had actually read this book before, so I'm not going to read it again, but I think I might put it on my desk in the dining room next door eventually um, but it just shows that she knows me very well because she happened to pick a book that I read and loved. Next is a Collins classic um, Dracula by Bram Stoker. We went to Whitby earlier this year and Bram Stoker wrote um, this book in Whitby and the book actually features Whitby so I of course had to buy the book whilst in Whitby and then the last book is 12 Years a Slave by Solomon North Northup this is one of the best books I have ever read and I decided recently that I was going to buy it again and keep it displayed on my bookshelf I then keep my Kindle here which is actually upstairs so that's just the case I got gifted some matches for my most recent birthday so I just keep them here it's a shame that the labels are both sides because otherwise I think it would be a lovely sort of aesthetic decor piece and then behind is something that Cody bought me years ago it's actually an incense burner and it's from a wood shop in Falmouth where Cody lived while he was studying for a year so it's a nice little keepsake from his time there and then in the middle these are some recent pieces actually so starting at the back I have a another print from an illustrator um, and the illustrator is called London Block by Block so she maps out various areas of London and just sort of highlights the key features of that area so I chose South Bank this is one of my most favorite areas of London and it just so happened to be green um, I did not plan that at all so I've just kept it in here whilst we're on the sort of green theme the rest of the house just really isn't ready for nice art prints so I've just got them sort of obviously as you can see displayed on these shelves for now but I think it looks good I recently bought this vintage clock from Amazon I just like the sort of old style and actually has an alarm which I've never used but again gold very fitting with this room theme and then just in front of it this is like a candle is it called like a candle snuffer again it's like very vintagey I like the wood and the gold tying in with the room nicely I don't think I'll ever use it though because I just like how shiny and pretty it is and then finally on the end of this shelf we've just got a black and white vase this is by Sasson Bell on Amazon I always see people online and in Pinterest and YouTube they go to all these vintagey charity shops and um, like vintage fairs and markets and they always pick out these beautiful vases and I just never have time to go to them but I really wanted a vase so I ended up buying a brand new one but I think when I eventually have time I would really really love to do like a charity shop haul and a vintage home haul and just try and find whatever rustic secondhand vintage pieces I can and again just slowly style various shelves around the home and then lastly the bottom shelf which does look a little bit bare um, but again you know as I collect more things along the way this will become a little bit more um, tied in nicely so again I have another print I don't know if I want to keep this here because it's a little bit too there's like a lot going on and again I think it's a bit too green and I don't know I just don't like it here but I also don't know where to put it so for now again I kind of liked that the photos are all on the diagonal so for now it just made sense to put it here and this is from Etsy I actually originally bought this in a teeny tiny size I think it was like an A 
what's really small is an A6, but I liked it so much that I ended up giving that to a friend and I bought myself an A4 size. Starting to introduce um, Christmas into the room, this is a just gingerbread diffuser from Next. Every year I always go to Next, especially on Boxing Day, and I normally haul all their beautiful Christmas candles, but last Boxing Day, they were fully sold out and that was the only thing left. Such a shame, but it does smell very nice. Um, moving along, this is a little dish from an art fair. My uncle is an artist and he bought me this years ago. I've used this over the years as key drops or again just as little sort of decor pieces on shelves. And just last week I bought this beautiful tree ornament, Let It Snow, with some cute penguins and it's also um, double sided so next week we are going to get our tree so I can't wait to put it up and similarly like I just mentioned with the shelves collecting pieces over the years that's how I feel with Christmas trees and Christmas ornaments I don't really like those shop bought um, basic ornaments I like the Christmas baubles and pieces and ornaments to have you know a memory or you bought it from a certain place or you bought it at a certain time so yeah slowly building my collection and then finally this again was another gift this is just a girl and a dog my mum bought it to represent me and Teddy who is um, their dog our family dog um, and I've put it on the right hand side because it's also from Nex so it ties in nicely with the tea light holder at the top and yeah that's the shells really you can see the color a little bit more here so Cody stained this with um, a Georgian oak color and then below the shelves we of course have this gap so as I mentioned earlier some people like to do a built-in cabinet I have been looking for the last year for a very vintagey cabinet or chest of drawer set but I just cannot find one that the depth actually fits, so the depth being this way. I wanted it flush against the wall, I didn't want it sticking out, but I've just not been able to find one and I don't want a brand new looking one, I definitely want a vintage one, so for now this is just how I've been styling it. And again, I kind of like that it looks minimal and I also like the concept of just not buying furniture for the sake of it because then what would I fit in it anyway? Would I then go and buy stuff just to fill it? So by keeping it sort of minimal, it, I guess, prevents me from buying crap to put in it and on it. So on the left-hand side, I just have my cute little plant basket, which no plants fit in it anymore. So I now use it as um, my workout bag. So I just keep things like tennis balls, resistance bands, a running water bottle, a foam roller, and my yoga mat. And I do Les Mills here in the living room. This is one of my newer plants. I can't remember what plant it is, but my friend gifted it to me for my birthday um, just in September. So it's so beautiful it reminds me of a turtle shell so um, I haven't got a name for it so if you'd like to write some name suggestions down below what you think I should name it comment down below I then bought this beautiful gold um, what would you call it like a tripod plant stand from a random website but again I knew I wanted it gold and it just ties in nicely with the room so that's the little shelving alcove it's very zen and minimal and um, it's just a place where I store my books this is where I like to read and somewhere I can relax with candles on some people have suggested that we buy like a single chair or something but there is only two of us and I actually do like the fact that it's not overwhelmingly cluttered. I like that there's a bit of space here because this is where you come in, you can walk to the shelves, you can walk around the coffee table. So again, I don't want to unnecessarily clutter it, but if I do happen to find the most perfect vintage table or chest of drawers, I think that would make that area look a little bit more full because as you can see, it's more busy over here. But nonetheless, I still love it. So let's now make our way to the TV. Now I've had a few comments over the year or so to say, why is your TV so high? You're gonna get neck ache. It's really bad for your posture. The reason is, is because we were hopeful of buying a log burner because behind um, the wall and under the TV, you can of course put in a log burner, but we, as I've mentioned, have been so busy with the rest of the house renovating and decorating, we just haven't had the spare money to buy something as luxurious as a log burner, but we've left it 
just in case one day we ever get around to it. And then I guess, you know, if we did go ahead and get a log burner or if the next owners go and get a log burner, I would definitely recommend putting a beam underneath, like a nice oak chunky beam. So moving on to this corner, again, it's very minimal, very cozy. So I've got a print on the wall, which was from a friend. I've put it here. Again, it ties in nicely, the black, the gold, the green, and the gray. I do think it's a little bit small for that wall. I was thinking the other day of getting maybe a little bit of a bigger print, but wondered would a big print distract from a TV and would it feel like there's a lot going on? So I'm not quite sure, so let me know what you think. We've got just a very simple gray lamp, which we've had for a couple of years now. Again, we've just not really felt the need to replace the lamp because this is gray, it ties in nicely, and it does the job, and we've been just sort of spending our money elsewhere where it needs it most. One of my most favorite plants in the whole world is Monica the Monstera, which um, she's just got very good pride of place here in the living room. These tables are from Wayfair. They have like a faux marble look on top with some gold legs. And I do not let anyone put their tea or coffee on those tables because I don't want them to be stained and I hate those ring marks. So then moving round to the bay window section. So we bought these blinds from Wayfair. Throughout the rest of the home, our other white blinds are from Dunelm, but Dunelm did not have measurements that would fit these outer windows. There seems to be a normal sort of standard size for these windows, but these seem to be much smaller. So luckily Wayfair saved the day and we were able to get ones that match very well with the rest of the home. And again, if I had the money and if I was staying here long term, I would certainly consider shutters because I think they look so good. I also recently found the most perfect pair of curtains from Next, which match really well with these cushions, which are also from Next, but um, so they're like little plant buds. The buds on the curtains were green and grey, again tying in nicely with the green and the grey that we have here, but again, if we move next year, do we really want to invest in an expensive um, pair of curtains? I also was wondering whether it would make it look quite messy and cluttered because at the moment I really like how neat it is. I like there's nothing draping on the floor, collecting dust. I didn't um, want anything too busy, so I'm just really not sure. So I ended up taking them back. I just think at the moment, those shutters make it look kind of neat and tidy and flush. So I was a bit worried that buying a big, busy pair of curtains would almost ruin the look and make the room a little bit maybe messy and unbalanced. Again, it's already quite busy over here in comparison to over here. So I just really wasn't sure. So at the moment I've just left it. Our sofas are from DFS. I think they're called the Chico or Chicago range. We bought them last year. So we've just bought a three seater and a two seater. I really love the look of the two seater. It just looks so neat and tidy. We originally wanted a sleeper sofa until we realized how expensive they were. So for the price of one sofa bed, we were actually able to buy two sofas with um, some extras and insurance and sofa cleaning kit and foot protectors. So unfortunately we didn't go ahead and buy them. And then in this corner, we have the other table which matches this table over here. So they came as a set of two from Wayfair. Previously, there was just this gap here. So originally you could think, okay, well, you know, the curtains would have gone in that gap, but there still would have been a bit of a gap on the front. So as we didn't go ahead and buy the curtains, there was still this random gap that definitely looked like something was missing. So I just thought, I really wanted a vintage -y table, but I just couldn't find one. So I actually think a modern one works anyway. And then as you can see on this table, I've got a very cool vintage globe. I absolutely love this. This is a recent purchase and I always touch it and I'm so intrigued to start you know, learning where where countries are, who they neighbor, rivers and seas and capitals and places. And I think it's a nice conversation starter. And it's also so in keeping that, you know, our house is 123 years old and I just love the vintage look that it has. And then of course I have a Yankee candle, which is getting quite dark now that it's been burning for some time. So this is one of my most favorite Christmas candles. It's the cinnamon stick. It's just such a lovely smell and, you know, being Yankee and how expensive they are, it deserves its own place. 
And I think the colours tie in nicely with the sort of browny, burgundy, vintagey look in that corner. So when we get our Christmas tree, the Christmas tree will have pride of place in the bay window because we have lots of people that walk past and I think it's really nice that they'll be able to see our tree. So of course when that tree is here, which will hopefully be next weekend, this sofa will be here. So it will reduce the gap here, but it still means that you know you can face out, you can see the TV, which again is why I was reluctant to buy anything or a single chair because that goes here for, you know, six to eight weeks. That's the three-seater sofa, and then we've just got a blank wall. I think Cody's really keen to get some prints or a large print, but again, the problem that I have is if we do move next year, you've bought very specific prints or art for a wall that you may not have the same colour, you may not have an old Victorian house again, so I just don't want to end up with a bunch of prints or art that don't match our next house. So I understand that it looks a little bit bare, but there's a reason for it basically. And then just to show you the lampshade, again, this is a fairly recent purchase from Amazon. I really wanted a, you know, like a fancy chandelier or something vintagey, but the problem is with chandeliers is that they've they've got like a long dangle to them. And then as I mentioned, our TV is quite high, so it did obstruct our view. So I just went for quite a plain, arguably quite boring lampshade, but I just wanted something simple that wasn't so distracting, but ties in nicely and could be something that you could take on with you when you're finished in the house. And then the final bits to show you are just the coffee table and the rug. So the rug is from Dunelm. It is super, super soft and cozy. I love it. I love that it gives that sort of pattern and a little bit of artiness to the room because the rest of the room is quite blocky, which I think I've mentioned before, you know, the sofas are just a block grey, the walls are a block French grey, and then you've got white, so I kind of like that it jazzes up the room a little bit. And then finally, we are actually going to be restoring this table this weekend. This was kindly gifted to us by a family friend, it's solid wood, I think it's pine if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was a very sort of darky colour but over the years we had and they had um, you know stained it, had lost a little bit of colour and depth and it had tea marks and stain marks. I actually spilt a cup of tea just before this video so a week or so ago I began sanding it just to see what it would look like and it was quite hard to sand away these corner areas um, and I also started to sand the sort of flatter edges but um, this weekend we're going to finish it off and sand away a couple of layers and we've also bought the stain which is the exact same stain colour as the floor and the shelves, the Georgian oak, I will leave it down below. And we've also bought some black paint to paint the metal and then we've also bought a sealant. So hopefully this table will look brand new and nice and pristine. I have been looking for the longest time for a table that was a little bit taller and a little bit larger and perhaps one that had storage underneath or drawers but again I just couldn't find one that I liked so I thought rather than wasting time and energy let's just use what we've got for now because you know there's nothing wrong with it and again you know if we move you don't know what you're going to end up in and this might be the perfect table for next time. And then just a couple of final pieces on the table I recently bought these two candlesticks from Amazon but I could not find candles that actually fit it so I need to go and find some nice colourful candles and and perhaps a nice big book to balance the mom because it looks a bit weird at the moment that they're just sort of sat there. And then I have my Calafia, which is growing wild. I am actually going to a plant shop for a plant swap very soon. So I think I might chop this in half um, and do a swap with someone because it's a little bit crazy now. And I guess that is everything in this living room. And so guys, that's the end of the living room tour. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, my name is Nay and I talk about all things health, wealth and happiness, as well as documenting our renovation journey of this 123 year old Victorian terrace here in Bristol. So if that's the kind of content you enjoy watching and you're not subscribed, please subscribe down below so you never miss another video. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.